Matt Kuhneman has formed a three-headed spin monster that two weeks ago would have been hilarious to even mention. In fact, it may still be now. And even he's a little bit silly. He's a bit like an intern who has ended up as the senior vice president of marketing because he's the only one who understands how TikTok works. And it's all completely accidental, being that they took almost every other spitter in Australia before actually coming up with his name. Last year, he was still trying to get jobs in club cricket in England. And now he's an opening bowler who has destroyed India. But for all this sort of nonsense, Kuhneman just works so well for Australia because he's potentially going to fill in a role that most non-Asian teams struggle with, the specialist second spinner for Asian conditions. A lot of those teams, of course, struggle to find one spinner at a time, let alone two. Shout out to South Africa, who suddenly just have heaps of them around. Think back to when New Zealand toured India. They didn't have a frontline spinner that could compete with the batters on spinning wickets, but they still had Ajaz Patel, who was obviously very good in Asian conditions, and they don't even try him outside of it. If Australia had Ajaz Patel to go with Nathan Lyon, that would be close to an ideal pairing. But most teams struggle to find, like, one of those balls. For Australia, Kuhneman could be their Ajaz Patel. Now, some of this may just be projection for me, because he's only played 15 first-class games, but Kuhneman doesn't look like a bowler who profiles as someone who can bowl in all situations. But he certainly looks like someone who is set up to bowl very well in Asia. And that might sound like a bad thing, but Australia hasn't had a bowler like this in a long time. Steve O'Keefe probably should have been used this way, and wasn't. So outside of Lyon, O'Keefe is the only spinner with more than five tests in Asia in the last decade. And you look at this list and you start to realize how bad it was before and what a great position Australia is suddenly in. They still have Lyon, whose main talent is bowling at home and chipping in everywhere else. Nothing in his record suggests he's about to have a big drop off because of age and he has a lot of knowledge about traveling around the world. That is a good player to have, but he's clearly not a great spinner in Asia. And so you really need an option to go with him. That was supposed to be Ashton Agar, who despite making his debut in 2013, has managed only two tests in Asia this was supposed to be his job, but somehow he went from next in line to not even in the country. And I can't wait for the next season of the Serial Podcast on how that all happened. The leg spinning Mitchell Serpson was in India, but scheduled the birth of his child at a very poor time. I'm still not really sure where he fits in for Australia. He struggled in Pakistan, but then again, so do all bowlers these days. But he was very good in Sri Lanka. This actually would have been an interesting series for him to play in to get a good idea of where he really sits. John Holland, who was the guy I thought made the most sense to turn into an Asian specialist. He actually bowls a little bit like that even in Australia, but he struggled in the UAE and Sri Lanka. And his form was better this year than Kuhneman, but I don't think there was a genuine push for him to come back. Lest we forget Xavier Doherty, who probably has a far worse international record than he should, but also was never going to be a quality test spinner. His average of 78 is quite jarring. And then you have all the random batters who have bowled over the years. In fact, if you didn't have them on this list, it would be incredibly short. And lucky it's just the last 10 years, and so we don't have to mention Cameron White, but we are mentioning him anyway. And we will mention him again. So the interesting thing here is that outside of O'Keefe, the next best wicket-taking spinners are Kuhneman and Todd Murphy. That's absolutely remarkable. Kuhneman was trying to find a nice brunch place in Melbourne when he got the call up. Murphy just started playing like eight minutes ago. And it wasn't even like Murphy was expected to play on this tour. His India adventure was more about getting experience and maybe play as the third spinner if he outbowled Mitch Swimpson in the nets. Instead, he did so well in the first game that people wanted him over Nathan Lyon, like, forever. And Murphy does look like a legit talent. And best case scenario, who takes over from Lyon. And it looks like he has the game to bowl all around the world. But the one thing that Lyon never had was a proper number two. I mean, this list is a living testament to that fact. So if Kuhneman and Murphy are as good as they currently appear, Murphy could go on to fill the role of Nathan Lyon with Kuhneman coming in when they need a second spinner. Although for right now, it means Australia has all three of them. Murphy looks like he can compete kind of anywhere. And from Kuhneman's record, I don't see that at all. Murphy actually hasn't had a bad first-class game yet. Now, he hasn't played many first-class games, but Kuhneman has only played a handful more, and he struggled in quite a few. His record really wasn't that impressive until he turned up for the second test, but it is quite clear that he can bowl in these conditions. And not since O'Keefe has an Australian spinner really looked like he was made for this particular job. Now, it's early, and he may develop or even regress, and Murphy is even harder to project. However, they are already equal third highest on this list. They are not just promising into the future bowlers, they are bowling well here and now. It would be hard to argue that Australia doesn't have three of their best spinners of the last decade in this team. Not to mention that Swepson is over there as well. This isn't Cameron White, told ya. This isn't Cameron White, again. Jason Crazier, Bo Casson, and Bryce McGain, is it? This is the best Australian spin has been since Warren McGill Miller. And it's obviously not at that level. But the age and experience and skills of the players overlap really well here, outside of the fact that none of them can bat. Australia is suddenly in a really good spot when it comes to spin. Today, it was a good day to be Matt Kuhneman, the equal third highest Australian spinner wicket taker in Asia in the last 10 years, or the third head of the greatest spin bowling threat Australia has had since 
you know, they used to actually produce regular spinners.